Hello everybody, thank you for joining me again today. I'm Lee from craftyspark.co.uk and in today's video I'm going to show you how I made a pocket card that I shared on my blog this morning. Now I'm going to do a slightly different colourway but it's basically the same kind of thing. Sorry, the cat just jumped on my chair <laughs> and squished all my paper. Look, I had all this on my chair. Oh well, never mind, that'll teach me not to be so untidy. Hang on, I'll stick that over there. There we go. Right, um, where was I? Yes, it's going to be a slightly different colourway, but still using the Tea Room Sweet Papers. Now then, oh, there it is. Right, let's get busy with it. I've got a piece of root trazzleberry here. And this measures eight and one eighth by eight and one eighth. And with my envelope scored, I am going to punch and score at three and three eighths. Let's just get that lined up there. So I'm going to punch and score all the way around. Now I know some people when they do these cards, they whoop. <laughs> and score all the way around and then I forget one yeah they don't bother scoring the top but I found if you score the top as well as all the sides you can actually line up your cutter much easier for when you actually chop the end off right get rid of those bits I will show you what I mean um, but I better better oh. I hit it here it is so what I'm going to do, can you see this score line here? See that one? That's where I'm going to cut, but I'm going to cut just under that score line. And to line it up, I'm going to use this flat edge and this flat edge. Okay, so stick it in there like that. Try and get it as precise as possible because then it, you just get a much neater finish and if I hold it down a bit I'm having um, one of my wobbly days go have a wobbly day now and again haven't we there we are that's it and then just chop it off so you are left with that and that that you don't need so you can get rid of that Get rid of my paper cutter as well okay you can still use your um bone folder score tool thing from your envelope punch board and then just fold and burnish all those sides inwards okay so this is now our shape before we start decorating it i'm just going to stamp inside so i've got some rich razzleberry um ink and I'm going to use the Tea Together stamp set. So we're all about tea today. Now from this stamp set, we're going with this one here. And I'm just using it. Whoa, I know you dropped it. I'm just using the stamp to decorate. So it doesn't need to be anything particular. But I just want it so that when this is open, you can actually see a bit of interest inside you'll see what i mean in a minute when i've done it so i'm just stamping a bit randomly twisting and turning as i go so i don't end up with a completely symmetrical kind of pattern you might be able to hear my cat he's meowing because he wants to get in the bedroom but he's not allowed there we go look like that all right so now Shut that before I drop it again. Can you see that? It's very subtle, but it's enough to look very pretty. So when it's actually folded up, you can just see the edge of it up there. Just gives it a bit more effect, I think. Actually, do you know what? While I've got that out, mm, 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 no, one thing at a time. Start jumping ahead, and then we'll get all lost, won't we? Okay, turn it over. So you've now got your stamping on the inside. 
and we're going to start decorating it now I've already cut some bits but I wanted to just run you through what I've got so that you know what you're doing with it and I'll cut this bit actually while I'm here so I've decided I'm going to use this as my base so this piece measures what is this four and three quarters sorry i couldn't read what i'd written there so four and three quarters by four and three quarters and i'm just going to cut it in half straight in half just like that okay and this piece is four and a half by four and a half and i'm going to do exactly the same on this one cut this one in half now you've probably noticed I've got this other little bit knocking around here, down here. That's one that I've already done. That one, your base piece needs to be three and three eighths by three and three eighths, and then your spoons going on the top, three and one eighth by three and one eighth. <laughs> Cat's going nuts. Hang on a minute. Wait a minute. Just gonna let the cat in. That's better, otherwise he's never going to be quiet. Very vocal, my cat. Right, now, what was I looking for? Snail. I'm going to snail it. I don't like those bugs. So when I first got this paper, I was like, oh my God, it's got bugs on it. Don't do bugs. My sister, she's such a git sometimes. She knows I don't like bugs. So she made me a card covered in bugs yeah I was not impressed she's a card maker like me so she her cards are coloring rather than sort of stamping and coloring I mean obviously she does stamping because she has to stamp on them before she can color the images but she is one of these absolutely stupendous colorist people in fact I'll put a link under my blog um, under this video actually to her YouTube channel you can nip over there and have a look but yeah sending me a bug card wasn't a happy bunny never mind she thought it was hilarious okay so I've put those on there now if we stick that on there it actually hangs over a little bit can you see so what I'm going to do is just snip off those ends once it's stuck on and the reason for that is because I want to make sure I'm at a good even distance on both sides just just put a little bit on there and a little bit on there and away. let's put a bit more there there we go now you could actually thinking about it I've just remembered on my other one that I did like this I actually stamped the pattern Oops, that's a bit wonky, wasn't it? I actually stamped that flower pattern on the back on this panel as well. But I'm trying to do this a bit qu quickly today. So I'm not going to do that, but that's a nice touch. There you go. Can you see? That's why I waited until I'd stuck it on so that I could make sure I did actually get like that a very uneven edge Hang on, let's try that again shall we let's do that again there we go that's a bit better so yeah put some on the back as well so when you stamp the flowers when you stamp them on the inside turn it over stamp it all over the back as well makes it look really nice i'll tell you what i will stamp it on the back of that i think today is the insert because there's an insert piece that goes inside this and I think I might put it on that yeah why not right let's finish this bit off first so can you see how I've got my edges sticking out here I mean you could if you wanted you could actually put that back through your envelope punch board it's just that 
I've decided not to. Right, well, the cat left me. Um, now the dog's here. <laughs> I'm being surrounded by animals today, and look, it's making me go all wonky donkey on my edges. It's because I'm not concentrating, isn't it? Oh dear. When you snip yours off, make them a bit neater. It looks much nicer. <laughs> well, it's nice and neat and tidy. Hang on, let me just trim that one up again. There we go. Right. That is going to be stuck like that. Oh dear, that looks really rough, doesn't it? If I do it in that way. I know. Let's go that way. I did the other one. I ran the other way, but you're not actually going to see that anyway. So... Nah, I'll cover that up with something else. Now, before I stick this down, actually, I want to show you a little trick. You know when you make things like this, and then you try and slot something inside, and it won't go in because it gets caught on this lip? Here's a little trick to get rid of that. Get yourself just some clear sticky tape, put it upside down, and stick that piece there to it so you've got it like that all right this is the sticky side this is the clear the non-sticky side clear side non-sticky whatever it's called lay it down actually i'm going to use glue for this that's my glue just lay it down and then when you stick this flap over you're actually going to catch that tape at the same time you see so I've gone on the tape and <laughs> I've got glue on the inside <laughs> Never mind. get rid of that that's it but it's cool on the inside there I don't know if you can see that it's already a bit dark mm, yeah it's caught on the inside which means when you actually put something on the inside of this you're not Oops, you're not going to get the um, insert stuck. It's going to stay exactly where it's supposed to be. Just sliding in, sliding out, sliding in, sliding out. Much easier, much nicer. And you won't be sitting there as somebody's doing it going, oh, please don't break it, please don't break it. <laughs> Which I've done before. Right. Okay, let's do the insert while we're here, shall we? So, for your insert, move that out of the way, I have got another piece of rich raspberry, and this is four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm using very vanilla here for three and three quarters by five. So, it's a bit smaller than the card because the final card is actually going to be six by four so that it fits in a nice six by four envelope. Right, I'll put that on there. And actually, while I'm here, I'm going to stamp this little... Oh, gosh, here we go. This little... What is it? Tulip? Is it a tulip? I don't know. I don't know what it is, actually. Put it on there. I'm going to use Memento because I'm actually going to colour this in with the blends in a minute. But it just has a little bit of interest on the inside, doesn't it? There, that's nice. That's nice, I like that. And let's do some more stamping on the back as well. But you know what? I'm going to stamp the back of this and the back of that in lightning speed. Ready? Watch this. How cool was that? Did you see? Did you see? I've turned into like Speedy Gonzalez with my stamping. <laughs> oh, crazy moment. Right. So, I've stamped the, both, the back of both of these now, which I think does make it look a bit nicer, don't you? And now, let me show you what else I've got. I've already, out of very vanilla, I've stamped and cut two roses. Because these are actually going to be the little tab that goes on the top. So you can pull it in and out. So... We're going to have one on either side, so they're going to stay there just for a minute. I've already cut a teacup, and the reason I've done that is because I wanted to 
cut one but show you how I actually decided how to cut it because it's not just a case of sling it on and hope for the best. Now, <laughs> let's just move those for a minute. So, I have got my Stamparatus and I've already got it set up with the teapot framelit from the Tea Together dies. Now, the Tea Together dies were on the um, celebration offer, well, they still are on the celebration offer until the 31st of March. After that, they won't be available again until the annual catalogue is released, which is 1st of June. All right. So if you want them now, get in there quick. If you're happy to wait, you've got until you'll have to wait till the 1st of June. But the reason I'm doing it like this is because I'll be perfectly honest. I don't like this paper. <laughs> I think it's I think it's quite yucky, really, to be honest. <laughs> However, you can pick out little bits of the pattern to make it look a bit nicer, which is what I've done here. And it's also what I did on my other card as well, which unfortunately I can't show you because I've already posted them, but they're on my blog and I'll make sure there's some photos of it at the end of this video as well. So you can see what I mean. What I did last time was I had... Um, I had it like that kind of whoops stuck to the magnet that was silly wasn't it oh don't crash thank you yeah I had it like that so I had sort of lots of pattern on one edge of the teapot and the plain bit at the top and then the teacup was just all plain but this time I thought I'm going to do it slightly different so I'm actually going to put lots of pattern at the top of the teapot hang on I'm just trying to avoid this one down here so yeah kind of about there now, unfortunately there's another bug <laughs> I don't like the bugs I don't like the bugs man but you're not going to see it so I can deal with it um now teacup that's what I was looking for I've done it the opposite way around so I've got more plain at the top but a patterned at the bottom because when that sits on there it'll be sort of nicely spaced out I'll show you what I mean in a minute but this is how I've figured out where to stamp and cut on the paper so put some paper on the stamper artists and then decide where your teapot is going so like I said I want maximum maximum what's it called What's this colour? Coastal Cabana. That's what that's called. But you also need to be aware of what is going to be where on your teapot. So if I turned it like that, I'd have a funny leaf on the spout, which would look a bit strange. So I'm trying to make it so I've got all the colour up there. I think kind of like that. That will do it. Now, I'm just going to grab a little bit of washi tape. Just to hold that in place for a minute. I'm not actually going to cut it yet, but what I do want to do is just hold it there so that I can line my stump up properly. So my tape is holding my die in the right place. Now I'm going to put my magnets on. And because I've taped it, the magnets aren't going to shift the die. Otherwise, it will switch over like it did just a minute ago. And then, whoops, let's just move that over just a smudge. That's it. So now I've got the teapot and I can just fit the teapot into where that die is. So you want you, if you slide it around a bit, it kind of slots itself into place. Then I'm going to shut my lid to pick up my stamp and then I'm going to take the die off. All right, because when I go to die cut it, I know exactly where I need to cut because I'll have the stamp in there by then. But now I know that my teapot is going to be exactly where I want it to be. Now, I'm using Memento ink today 
to be perfectly honest, it would probably be better to use stays on, which is what I used last time, because I want a really black image. And Memento is, is a good ink. It's a really, really nice ink, but it's not really black, black, black. It's more of a light black. Do you get light black? Not grey. I don't mean grey. It's just not not the blackest black that was ever black for any Monty Python fans. <laughs> green is green. Green is green you've ever seen. Well, we're the blackest black you've ever seen. <laughs> Some people are probably thinking, what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> it's a Monty Python thing. Personally, I don't really like Monty Python much, but my husband loves it, so I, I tend to learn all this stuff, even when I don't want to learn it. Right, let me just go and die cut this. And then, whoops, we can start putting it on. And there we have it. There is our teapot. Right, move that over there. So I don't get covered in it from that. So, we have our base bit, a pocket, that's what's called, pocket, and a teapot, and a teacup. Now for the tray, <laughs> mm, I know, shouldn't, I'm not so have to, but I've used the largest oval die from the stitched framelit dies, and I wasn't sure which colour to use, which is why I also haven't coloured this in yet, because I was thinking, you know, if, if that was kind of like whoop, that which is how it's going to go is that going to be too dark no gonna stick with that sorry you don't work we're going to go with this which means let's color the flower now i've got what have i got old olive dark old olive here and in no perfect fashion at all because I'm as I've already said colouring is not my thing I'm just going to colour this in now something Sasha did teach me when she was trying to teach me how to colour she's tried quite a few times I failed quite a few times as well but something she did say which was a really good tip actually is if you use a dark one so this is the dark Clipso coral and just basically draw the line around where you've done the black stamping because that then will form the edge of the petals now you can see I'm not really doing a great job of it but that's the beauty of these blends you don't need to do a great job of it because they are as they say they blend which is actually really really cool watch this watch see if I just go over it and over it and over it and over it and over it the colours just start to melt together maybe they should call them melting pens instead of blending pens <laughs> that could be weird couldn't it hey I've got some melting pens you want to come and try them mm -hmm. there I think that is about it but look, like, it's, it's just kind of all merged together. But at the same time, whoop, you've kind of got a bit of toning and colouring and things going on. That's quite cool, isn't it? Very impressed. Thank you, Sasha. Right, let's put these together now then. So, we are going to have our flower... What way up does it go? It's, oh, it's kind of that way yeah so if we put it about there now I'm just gonna pop a little bit of glue on that edge I should probably wait for this alcohol to dry properly first but never mind it'll be fine roughly in the middle I kind of kind of like that and then this other piece it's going to go on the other side now when you die cut an image you end up where the die goes down you get this kind of nice rounded edge going on and the other side there's 
I don't know if you can see, but it's a tiny little lip. It's very small. You may not be able to because I can't zoom in on this camera very well. Ah, look, you can just see it. You see it there? So what you're going to do before you stick it on is just flatten it out with your bone folder. Just go around those edges, give them a good hard rub and it will flatten them out so that when you actually stick it on, it's nice and flat just like the other side. Looks so much nicer. Right, glue all over this one because this is going to be a little tabby bit, tab bit, tabby bit, tab, tab, d bit, tab, yeah, I think it's tabbed, tabbed, oh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, right, let's stick that on there, now, it looks a bit, a bit lonely, doesn't it, everything else has got a nice pretty flower on, that hasn't got a flower on, let's put a flower on it, I've still got some ink left, from where I stamped just now, so I'm going to huff it. <sighs> I huffed it just to make the ink wet again. And let's give it a little bit of a wiggle. There you go. Just puts a little image back on it. Mm, yeah, that'll do. Probably should have done it in Calypso Coral, but it's okay. That's fine. Now, because that's Calypso Coral, I've just remembered we've got this little dinky thing down here, haven't we? So let me just do this one. Should we go lightning speed again? <laughs> nah. There you go. Done. Easy. Right. So that can now slip into there. Now, when you look at it like that, it looks a bit oof, doesn't it? Because you've got the green and you've got the Calypso coral and nothing is blending together. But that's where the dodgy teapot comes in. <laughs> because this is going to be our tray. This is going to be our teapot. So you can see it already, can't you? And our teacup. So what I want to do is I'm going to put this together uh what have we got down here i'm just finding some dimensionals and things because we've got big ones little ones we've got all sorts of ones actually i'm going to sit down as well now the cat's got off my chair because then i can put these together a little bit easier um right let's let's glue them let's start with our tray so i'll put that kind of down and just over a little bit I want it straight but it doesn't need to be lined up in the middle because we're offsetting things okay the teapot is going to go at the back and then the teacup will be at the front but I want to make sure I've got dimension on all of this so rather than just sticking the teapot straight down I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back now, because it's paper, and it's this particular paper, it's not that sturdy. So you might find it's easier for you to cut yourself out just a plain teapot and stick this teapot to your plain teapot. Okay, because by doing that, it's going to make it a little bit stronger so when you're sticking it together or sticking it on the card rather like this you can actually get hold of it and you know it won't bend and <laughs> do that for example like I just did there almost tore it right let me do my my speedy taking the dimensional backs off hang on there we go super fast as always right so teapot about there I think that's it nice teapot and then I'm going to do the same oh, get off same with a cup and saucer 
these backings get absolutely everywhere I found them in so many weird and wonderful places <laughs> now if I just stick this on there obviously this isn't going to stick straight is it it's going to be a little bit lopsided I think I wonder it's only just, it's just that corner yeah it's just that corner I was going to say what I could do is actually double up the dimensionals so put one over the other so I've got a double layer but I think we're okay actually well we would be if I can get these backings off oh my word there we are done it done it right so teacup can go there there you go Mrs teacup and there we have our finished pocket card so we've got our little cup and saucer get off with our tab to pull out and do you know what you could also do if you wanted to you could even decorate your envelope because that would make it look really pretty wouldn't it with a decorated envelope I might put a bit of ribbon on in as well in a minute yeah because okay, I need to hide these two bits yep yeah, I might do that later I'll see how we go right that's it for today anyway I hope you enjoyed that everything you need will be underneath the video as well as on my blog post if you want to see some more photos of the original one that I did just nip over to my blog by clicking the link underneath this video and it will take you straight to the right post and you can have a look at the other colour variation that I did using exactly the same papers so the tea room sweet papers but slightly different colouring and different styling all right I will see you again very soon take care of yourselves bye Thank you.